This video should be quite short, we're just going to look at float times. I mentioned this in the last video, towards the end, they're pretty simple to work out. Um, we need to understand what they are, what they mean, um, and how to explain what they are as well. So, a, float of, a total float of an activity is the amount of time that it can be delayed by um, without delaying the whole project, uh, affecting the duration of the project. It says in the notes, um, critical activities have zero float, that's why they're critical activities, if you delay them at all, then it's going to affect the overall duration. But some activities will have a little window where they can start. And as long as they end by the end of that window, it doesn't matter if it starts a little bit later. It'll delay that activity, obviously, but it won't affect the overall um, time of the project. So in order to work out our floats, um, our float, and this is in the notes, is the late finish time of the activity. So the bottom number after it. So for A, for example, here's my late finish time. For B, here's my late finish time. For D, here's my late finish time, etc. Minus the duration of the activity. Remember the durations are the numbers next to them. Minus the early start time for that activity. So that's how we calculate the float. So the early start times, remember they're the top numbers. These are the early start times. Okay, which kind of makes sense if you look at C, for example. Um, C can start as early as 3, and it can finish as late as 11. So if it can start on day 3, imagine we have a little timeline, there's day 3, there's day 11, but C only takes 4 days, whatever that is. So there's a little bit of room to move C around. It doesn't have to start on day 3. It can start on day 5, and it'll still be done by day 9, it'll still be done by the late finish time. Remember, that's what the late finish time means, the latest it can finish without delaying things. So I could delay C all the way up to day 7. As long as it starts before or on day 7, it'll still be done by 11. However, if I start on day 8, then that's going to have a knock-on effect because that would then finish at 12 and then this is then affected and that'll delay the rest of the project. Um, but these are really quick to calculate, so we're just going to determine the float for all of these. So our floats, um, so we can have a little, we'll have a, a little activity list and a little float list. We've got A to H on me. And we're going to look at our floats for each one. So the float of A is here. It's going to be the late finish time minus these two added together. So 3 minus 3 minus 0. So a float of A is 0. It's critical. So 0 float. I'll leave these up for you as well. B. Here's B. Also looks critical to me. So B should have 0 float because it's the 9 at the bottom minus the 6 minus the 3. And you might have to show how you calculate these floats as well. C, we've already mentioned, C will have float. So the late finish time is 11. Then we minus the duration of the start time. So minus 4 minus 3 gives us 4. So C has got 4 days. We could delay it by 4. We could start C at 7 and it'd still be finished by 11. Hopefully we're getting the idea. D looks critical to me, so it's going to have 0 float. But just to make sure of 11 minus 2 minus 9, which is indeed 0. E is here. So E, we take the late finish time, which is 12, minus the duration, which is 1, minus the early start time, which is 7. So it's also got a float of 4. I can delay E till day 10, and it only takes one day. It'll still be done by 12, and it'll be done at 11. I can delay it till day 11 if I wanted to, and it'll still be done by 12 etc. F. So for F we've got the 16 minus 4 minus 7. So it's actually got a float of 5 days or hours whatever it is in the question. Um, G has got it's critical isn't it? 16 minus 5 minus 11. Late minus this minus this. And then H, 16 minus 4 minus 9, which is 3. So H has 3 as its float time. Okay, so pretty simple to calculate. It should make sense. Float is the late finish time minus the duration and the early start time. And it's how much you can delay something by and not have to delay the whole project. There's one more question which we're going to look at.
There's number two. Projects Activity Network is shown below. Find X, Y, and Z. List the critical activities. Calculate the float of E. So just four marks. Should be quite a quick question. So let's have a look at part A. So X, Y, and Z to start with. So where's X? So X is down here, isn't it? Okay, so remember to find our late finish times. We're working backwards from the activities after it. And we want to do the late finish time minus the duration. So 15 minus 12, which is 3. Same for the other one, which is 7. And we pick the smaller, I don't know why I'm working in green. And we pick the smaller of those two. Okay, so we'll pick the 3. So x equals 3. If you think about that, when you put your 3 in here, um, f takes 12, doesn't it? So this is going to have to be finished by 15. So 3 plus 12 is 15, and also 2 plus 12 is 14, so that makes sense too. Okay, this one, if this finishes at 3 and this takes 4, this can finish a bit later, can't it? E has got some float, which is actually what we're going to work out later on. But yeah, to find our late finish time, Look at the activities after the event. Remember the events of the boxes, the activities are on the arcs. Late finish, minus duration, pick the smaller one. Let's find Y. So Y is a early start time. So remember they're different. You want the activity beforehand. And you want to do the early start time plus the activity time. So 6 plus 4. There's no other activities going into this event. So 6 plus 4 is just simply 10. Z is a late finish time. And again, Z is quite nice and easy because it's just got one activity after it. So we just want to do the late finish time minus the duration, 21 minus 4. So Z will be 17. So Y was 10. And Z is 17. And everything's kind of sorted. So then we can list our critical activities. So remember our critical activities, you want to do either pick ones that are zero float or where these numbers are the same and that duration is the difference between them that's a critical activity so our critical activities and if you want you can pause the video and have a go at this first and check you've got it right so the critical activity so a will be critical b is not critical because of that three three minus two minus zero is one it's got a float of, of one c also not critical, this box here at the end shows that it's not critical. 12 minus 4 minus 6 gives us 2, so it has float. Um, D is critical. Numbers match, numbers match, duration is 5, that's the difference between them. E is not critical, and we know that because of this as well. So E is not critical. F, also not critical. G also not critical, the 10, 12. We can delay G, it'd be fine. H is critical, 11, 11, 17, 17, and the six is the difference between them. So H is. I is also critical, 11, 11, 18, 18, and seven is the difference between them. J, not critical, 18 and 18 might be, but this is not, and the three is not the difference. J, K is critical, 17, 17, 21, 21, the four in between them, and so is L, 18, 18, 21, 21, three. Remember, just be careful from the last video. If this matches and this matches, this is, does not always mean this is critical because the numbers might have come from different activities. So just check that the difference between these is the duration of the activity, and then it will be a critical activity. So that's our critical activities. And then calculate the float of E. So E is here. So we want to do the late finish minus the duration and start time. So the float of E. And you want to write down the calculation. I know it's an easy calculation, but write down 11 minus 4 minus 2 because that shows them how you're calculating and that's your method you're working for this question. And that's all your stuff on Floats.